Hi everyone, Denise from Salvaged Inspirations and thanks for joining me today. Today I have such a fun project and I'm so happy with the way it turned out. I have taken a 90s dated wing chair and I have turned it into this faux leather, magnificent, modern looking faux leather and I love it. I just love the way this turned out. So I'm excited to share this with you today. Um, at the end of the video, I'm also going to be sharing a granny chair project that I did way back in, two, what was it, 2016. And there's a lot of videos showing how to paint upholstery. Uh, however, there's not a whole lot of videos showing how it holds up over time. So I'm going to bring you upstairs to my staging area afterwards and show you how this painted chair has held up. So let me get to it. I'm going to set up and I'll be right back. I started by taking out my shop vac and giving the chair a really, really good vacuuming. I debated whether to clean it with a little bit of Dawn and warm water because my dog used to use it as her personal face cloth, but decided the skirt was coming off anyways. The skirt was held on by upholstery staples and I used a screwdriver and pliers to remove them. Once I got the hang of it, it went quite quickly. Uh, but you have to be really, really careful removing these because they are sharp. I actually cut myself, not badly, but <laughs> I poked myself a good few times while I was doing this. Um, I think the key, the most important part is when you're removing them, some of them tend to break off, some of them don't want to come out. Be sure that you run your hand along it and make sure they are all out because they can be really, really sharp and dangerous and you can easily cut yourself on them. So the ones that I had a really hard time uh, trying to get out, I used a hammer to hammer them back in so the whole bottom was perfectly smooth. The next step was mixing the paint and this is all going to depend on what color you want for your faux leather. Uh, that's all personal preference. I wanted a bit of orangey undertone so I used Dixie Belle's terracotta and I also used Dixie Belle's chocolate. The mix was about three quarters uh, terracotta to one quarter chocolate. I didn't, I didn't, I just eyeballed it. There's not an exact recipe here, uh, but it's about a three to one ratio. You can have a lot of fun mixing different colors to find out uh, what color faux leather finish you want. You could do grays, blues, blacks, reds. Uh, really, its possibilities are limitless. After I poured it in the container, I gave it a really, really good mix and I was ready to paint. There's nothing tricky or hard about painting fabric. The key is making sure that the fabric is wet enough to absorb the pigments in the paint. So it's kind of like dyeing the fabric rather than just painting on dry fabric and having the paint sit on top. You really want it to sink in. I know a lot of people, uh, me included, use a water misting bottle to spray the fabric with water first and then start painting. I tried this when I did my granny chair a few years back and it does work but I much prefer dipping my brush in water, dipping it in paint and then painting. I find it much faster and easier. It works, it works very nicely for me this way. The first coat of paint didn't cover this pattern at all really. You could see the pattern very, very clearly through the first coat, which is just fine. I just wanted to get a base down and it actually took three coats to cover this pattern totally. I just kept repeating this process. I would take my brush, dip it in the water, then dip it in the paint and paint the fabric. Uh, you'll notice I'm using quite a large brush. It's a three inch Wooster brush, uh, which I love for projects like this because it gets the job done quickly. The larger the brush, the more area it will cover and the faster you'll get it done. 
I just made sure that I got into all the nooks and crannies and didn't leave any of the fabric unpainted. Um, if you have any creases or piping um, or like the creases within the chair, just make sure you really get the paint in all the areas. Here I am painting the cushion and it works the exact same way as the body of the chair. You just have to make sure to get into all the nooks and crannies. Also, this is a messy job because you're working with the water and the paint gets wet, so don't wear your fancy clothes to do this. Also, I'm working in my studio, so it really doesn't matter about the floor, but if you're working in a space in your home, uh, a drop cloth is a very good idea. So here is what the chair looks like after the first coat has been applied. You can see the pattern clearly through it, but you can already start to see that the chair is beginning to, the fabric's beginning to take on the color of the dye slash paint. Once the fabric was dry, but I'm not going to say it was 100% dry, uh, it was probably... I'm guessing like 90% dry because it still felt a little damp to the touch. I went ahead and I added the second coat and you'll see here that the second coat it already is really making a big big difference in covering the pattern. I did the same steps. I used my big three inch Wooster brush. I dipped it in the water and then I dipped it in the paint and then applied the second coat to the entire chair and the cushion. After three coats, I was really happy with the coverage, and here comes the fun glazing part, the faux leather technique. I had a little bit of leftover terracotta and chocolate still in the bottom of my container, but I added more chocolate and added about 10 to 15 percent of Dixie Belle's Van Dyke Brown glaze to the mixture. Uh, just enough to give me a little play time so it wouldn't dry up that fast. Again, using my 3 inch Wooster brush, I dipped it into the glaze paint uh, mixture and working in small sections, I added a coat on and then I used regular tissue paper, uh, any sort of gift wrap tissue paper, paper will work. I scrunched it all up to create a bunch of creases within the tissue paper. And then I carefully laid it on top of the wet glaze paint mixture uh, so it sticks. Because this sheet was a full sheet and I only needed half to do this part of the wing, I tore the other half off so I could use it for the other side. Taking a soft dry brush, this is not the 3 inch Wooster, this is a dry brush that I'm using here, I patted it on and sort of lightly, lightly brushed it on just so all the parts of the tissue paper were attached or touching the wet glaze paint. Once you have contact, you can just peel it right off and you get your faux finish. I repeated the exact same process on the other side for the other wing and then worked in small sections all the way around the chair until it was totally complete. This is not a technique where there's going to be any sort of perfection. It doesn't have to look a certain way. It just kind of does its own thing. So don't get deterred if you're looking at it thinking, oh, this looks a little odd. Uh, what brings this all together is the waxing at the end. And I'll show you how that's done uh, in a bit. Uh, it's a little bit different than waxing, say, for instance, a wood dresser because you don't really rub it in as you would the same way. Uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. You will need a fresh, new, dry piece of tissue paper for each section that you do because it does get quite saturated with the paint glaze. Uh, if you have a little area that's not done, like here on the corner, you can always use the dry side of it and just kind of tap it on. I just love the way this tissue paper gives so much texture over the paint. 
The last and final step is dark waxing. I use Dixie Belle's brown wax and around the piping and in the crevices, I applied it a little heavier uh, than I did on the rest of the chair. I used a shop cloth to rub off the excess, um, but rather than buff it in like I would usually with a dresser, wood piece of furniture, I took a 220 sanding pad and gave it a light sanding. Now this chair will probably take a little longer, the wax on this chair will take a little longer to dry than say if I had buffed it out. Um, but you know what, in a week or two it'll be ready to sit on and I can't wait. It's going to go in my office. Here's the before and after and I am so pleased with how it turned out. I would love to hear what you think in the comments below. So as promised, I'm heading upstairs to my staging area and I'm gonna show you how this chair has held up over the years. It was painted in 2016 with General Finishes chalk style paint. So it's been four years, actually a little over four years because it was painted in February. So maybe four, four and a half years. Uh, it's been used a lot. I think you can see my little fur baby down there. Uh, she jumps on it continuously. I've knelt on it, sat on it. Um, it's, it's had a lot of use. So just let me turn it around so you can take a look. So here's the chair. Uh, and I have to say, it looks really, really good. It has held up extremely well over the years. Um, I'm gonna give you some close-ups. It's still soft to the touch. Uh, this is where it's been knelt on and kneeled on, I don't know how many times. Uh, there's a little bit of paint missing there. And there's also a little touch of paint missing right at the front here. Uh, but aside from that, it has held up perfectly. I um, can't be more pleased. I'm hoping that this new chair that I've just painted is going to hold up just as well because this is pretty impressive. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If so, please feel free to give me a like or subscribe here on YouTube. You can also subscribe and visit me over at salvagedinspirations.com. Thank you so much and have a beautiful day.